Hey, what's up, guys? This is Toph of BitForce, and I'm here to give you a rig rundown of my kit that I use in the studio and live. So here we go. So the kit itself is actually a DW Design Series acrylic. Um, now these packages come with um, a five-piece. It's a 10, 12, 16, 22, and a 14-inch snare. Um, I did go ahead and order the extra eight inch tom, and I'm really glad I did. Um, I like having that, that higher tonal option whenever I'm playing and writing things. Um, the kit itself is fantastic. Um, because it is an acrylic shell, it's not quite as warm as uh, other drum sets, other wooden drum sets, so it doesn't quite um, sustain as long and you get lots and lots of attack. So with that being the case, I don't really have to use much dampening really at all on anything because the sound is so controlled. Now, I am using for the first time the Evans 56 Caftone heads. Um, I've got this one right here and I've got the um, EMAD version on the batter side where it has its own dampening ring on it. Um, I've been playing with these for a few weeks now, and they sound pretty amazing. Uh, I've never used a Caftone head, or rather I should say I haven't used one in a very, very long time. Um, so it's nice to get that warm tone that sometimes these drums lack. And speaking of tone, let's go with my heads. Now, as you can see, I use Evans on everything absolutely everything i love evans drum heads right now currently i am using the evans uv2 now these just came out they just uh, came up with their own proprietary coding system and it's almost like they reinvented the wheel i've used the uv1s i have a bop kit that i have it on and this coding just lasts forever you see a little bit of black on there from cross sticks um, but I've hit these drums so hard there's been no chipping whatsoever I don't have any dents any divots nothing like that in these heads and um, I've been going pretty hard on them so so far I really really love them I went with the coated route because I do need a little bit more of that warmth when it comes to the toms themselves so to kind of balance out the coldness of the acrylic shells, I usually go coated on, on my toms. Now I'm even doing the UV1, or sorry, UV2 on my snare as well. Um, it does ring out nice and big. Uh, I do have just a little bit of sound control here with the moon gel just for recording purposes, but these drums sound great. Now, studio use. I always have this. Whenever I'm playing live, this setup may vary. Sometimes I'll just rock a four piece and I'll bring the 12 and 16 and that's it. Um, depending on the show, I may pull out everything. Same thing goes with the cymbals. I don't always play all of these at once. Um, so let's see here. I am using some DW9000 pedals and hi-hat stand. I love these pedals they're super smooth i hope to upgrade to their machine direct drive soon because those are so sweet uh, my rock and sock throne most people don't have this bass this is the nitro bass um, usually you get the collapsible three-pronged metal legs but this one actually goes up just a little bit higher because of the way the bass is laid out i've had this thing for like 13 years something absurd like that. Uh, it's a fantastic throne. Uh, it has an optional back mount if you want it. I do use one of my floor toms from another kit as a table of sorts. <laughs> so I've got my in-ears resting over here with the line running over to my mixer. Uh, let's see what else I got here. In-ears case, my mouth covering, my face mask to make sure I don't catch any germs out. A really gaudy metal shaker. And this bad boy. So I did go ahead and install the drum light system. 
I have the dual row LEDs. So I have LEDs on the top and on the bottom. Um, the drum lights definitely did kind of push me in the direction of getting acrylic drums besides like the sound. I wanted something that was visually striking as well. Um, you see them changing colors and really with the, the coated heads, these things glow in the, the lighting of a nightclub or a venue on stage anywhere. These things really, really light up and they, they look really awesome. Uh, right now it's just on a fade and what you can do is actually you can control the speed at which the lights change. There are individual color settings that you can cycle through. Um, I usually have it on purple just because that's my favorite color, um, but uh, it's really, really cool. I installed everything myself. You can actually see the wiring internally because you have to have everything coming through the vents to link up with uh, an XLR type cable. Um, I do plan on getting their triggers very, very soon so that I can control these drums individually and set them all to their own unique color, which is something I really want. They even have like a sound response when you play it, it lights up and stuff like that. So let's move on to my cymbals. So as a whole, I mostly play Sabian, but I do have kind of an amalgam of a bunch of different brands over here in the studio. About 90% of them are Sabian. So my hats, these big meaty pies, 16 inch AAX explosion hats. These things are huge. Some people use crashes this big. Um, they sound really, really good because of its, uh, because of the line that it is, the AAX series. They're nice and bright, even though they're they're big. So I wanted something that had a little bit more body, but still cut, and these do exactly that. The next one I have is the 12 inch Sabian Chopper. So this is kind of like a symbol sandwich of sorts. There are three different layers to this thing. It's all different kinds of uh, metals on the bottom. It's not quite as brilliant. It's kind of like this type right here. Um, but this thing is really short, really quick. Lots of accents and you can um, change the sound of it depending on how tight you have it. it. Has rivets in here as well to add to the effect. But uh, this is fairly loose. I keep all my symbols nice and open. So, next thing we're moving on to is the 18 inch HHX Evolution Crash. This is the Dave Weckl signature line. It's a medium thin crash. It opens right up. It's uh, really, really quick. It's gorgeous sounding as well. Again, symbol is loose. I'm letting all of that energy go throughout the metal as I'm playing and it really extends the life of these things and it sounds gorgeous. Now the next set I have right here, um, I have a 10 inch Zildjian Trashformer. These things are really cool. I do go through them pretty quickly. This is my second 10 inch. I also have an eight inch. Um, they sound awesome, nice and dark, nice and trashy. I really like trashy symbols. This is honestly, um, just a cheap Agazarian symbol that you can get a guitar center. This is the line that they replaced Wuhan with in stores. So you can't really find Wuhan symbols anywhere um, because they replaced them with these. You can get um, little auxiliary symbols for really cheap. Like I said, just because of how I use my splashes, I go through them. So um, I usually have a couple on deck. I, I go through these all the time. The next piece I have I get compliments on all the time. There are a few other drummers that actually use this exact china um, in, the, in the scene that, that I'm in. It's the 17 inch AA Holy China, the Chad Smith line. Um, I had the 19 inch, I broke it on tour unfortunately. Um, I love both of them. I honestly don't know which one I like more. Um, they, they sound great, nice and open. Um, this one is pretty loose as well, just so I can extend its life, make sure it sounds good, but uh, this thing cuts. It's, it's uh, not as 
high pitched as other chinas because of the holes they let the energy out so it's nice and dry it sounds great now over here i have my broken crash stack so this is actually the uh, zildjian eight inch trash formula that's broken and a 10 inch cracked agazarian symbol and it's real short it's a nice little auxiliary symbol set up that i that i usually play off of uh, my chopper with um, and it just adds another flavor, another texture to the song. Sounds really good. My second crash is the HHX Groove Crash. This is an 18 inch. Um, this thing gets played probably more than most other crashes that I have. It's, it's full bodied for its size. It's a, a medium thin as well, but uh, it kind of sticks out a little bit more than the Evolution does. This thing is really, really pretty. And I will say that the bell on all of the Sabian crashes I have, they, they all sound fantastic. Now, we're hitting the spotlight. This is my favorite piece of gear that I have ever owned in my entire life. So this is a Peisty 24 inch prototype. If you've ever seen like the 20 Masters series that Peisty does, they have a couple different finishes. Um, this is essentially what the 20 Masters, I believe, dry went on to be. This thing is thick. I cannot crash this symbol even if I wanted to. It just sounds like a piece of metal being clanged. But the tone of this symbol how well it cuts live and in the studio is amazing. It's so dark, but it still cuts through the mix. This thing was literally tucked in the corner at Guitar Center Katie when I worked there. It was there for forever. And then finally, when I did move to San Antonio, I had it transferred to my store specifically so that I could buy it. There were only two in the entire country in the inventory and me and my good buddy Alfredo own both of them. So, sorry, can't get this thing. It's, uh, it's already spoken for, but I love this symbol so much. And finally, I got my 20 inch AAX Aero Crash. So the same technology that they have with Holy China, they made this whole Aero series again fantastic bell if i want um that full body crash that usually you can get from a ride symbol i go to this guy it's bright it's dry it cuts it's huge i love this symbol um i don't always play it live in the studio it's a must have usually this thing just kind of stays right here and um yeah it's fantastic we have been working really really hard on our original album and this is the kit that i'm using for it and it sounds great um the only thing left that i really have are going to be my sticks so i actually don't usually have my stick bag right here i kind of stole that trick from thomas lang and i have it hanging in between my legs right here on my snare drum when i play live in case i need a symbol or a symbol in case i need a stick I just pop one up and I'm good to go. But the only six I play or will ever play, Big Firth. I love the painted sticks that they have. Um, for whatever reason, that painted lacquer um, doesn't tear up my hands quite as much. So the clear coat on some drumsticks just really, really goes through my skin. Um, but with these, I can play for hours and I, I rarely ever break open a callus. Uh, these are the five Bs. Um, I really, really wish that they would make a purple series, but um, I digress. Anyway, uh, I've tried a couple different heads, uh, the head combinations on this kit. I've used G2 coated before. I've used the EC2 clears and the EC2 frosted on the snare. I'm really digging this right now. I do have plans to actually port my Rezo head because on the inside in my Kelly shoe mount, there's actually a microphone. 
So if you look down there, that's the Rita 91 and the Kelly shoe harness. So that thing is literally suspended in the bass drum. It floats on its own. And I just run an XLR from that out the front of the head. And then I have an internal miking of my cake as well as an external. So I will be porting this guy pretty soon. But as of now, this is what we're rocking. So pretty sweet. If you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comment section. Um, I love gear. I've got tons of it, honestly. So um, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you check out our videos on YouTube. Check out all our social media. Take it easy.